this setup has taken me too long, but we're here, so yeah. Okay guys, so you probably already know what this video is about from the title. It's about how I landed a job at one of the big four companies. I'm not gonna disclose which one of the big four I'm working for. The reason I'm doing this is because I feel like when you're in university, it seems so hard to get a job there and it is, like it's competitive, but people just don't know the right steps to take. So I will be sharing exactly the steps I took and the steps that my peers that I'm working with have taken. Like I can almost guarantee if you guys follow these steps, you guys are gonna land a job at the big four if that's what you want to do. Also, my objective with this video is not to be super formal. Like I already know that you guys are like probably watching this video because you're in school right now and everything's already super stressed. I'm just talking to you from someone who's maybe a few years older, has been through the same stuff you guys are going through and I'm just here to ease your nerves. The first thing that I would suggest doing in your undergrad is getting LinkedIn. I actually didn't even get LinkedIn until like my third year, which I regret. Having LinkedIn, it's nice because obviously it's a good way to network with professionals in your industry, but it also is nice to follow up after meeting someone or networking events. The reason I'm saying that you guys should do LinkedIn is because when you are at networking events or if you meet someone, it's a very easy thing to be like, hey, Hey, by the way, this is a great conversation I've had with you. I'm just gonna add you on LinkedIn. That way you can actually send a follow-up message on LinkedIn to remind them that like, hey, this is so-and-so and we met during this event and it was great talking to you. What this really does is it really just puts your name in their heads. It's kind of a psychological trick. What I used to do is I actually used to get business cards because a lot of these professionals who I'd be talking to or bumping into randomly, they would have business cards or they would share their email with the students. And so I would always just go home that very same same day and then I would send an email and be like hey this is Gerline and you know I had a great time talking to you learning about this this and this or whatever the case may be right and just have a follow-up email those follow-up emails are so crucial and that lands me to my second point networking events there are so many networking events that happen especially in the fall season because that's when the big four do most of their recruiting it's rough for students because that's the beginning of the semester and you guys are just adjusting I highly suggest even though you might have a quiz or a midterm or make it to all the networking events that you can go to a you're gonna be getting so much more exposure you're gonna increase the likelihood of you meeting and actually connecting with someone at one of the big four which increases your likelihood of getting an interview which increases the likelihood of you working there B you really get to sharpen your social skills and it's nerve-wracking. I totally get it. You can go with a friend, but the danger of going with a friend to these networking events is that sometimes you just stick with each other and you can get shy. When you force yourself to go alone to networking events, you have to talk to people. You have to go through that kind of awkward phase where you're just wondering which circle to go into, but you know you have to go through it. That's how you're gonna learn how to talk, that's how you're gonna learn how to communicate, and that's how you're gonna learn how to put your best foot forward and be your most authentic self. I'll get into that a little bit more later but before I even talk more about networking I want to share with you guys how you can even find these networking opportunities if you guys are at a university or a college and you don't know where to even start looking for these events you should really go talk to your advisor or you should go on your career link center there hundred percent should be in your faculty some sort of career link center which lets you know of upcoming events upcoming networks job fairs you guys should stay on top of that and if you don't know how to find that information make an appointment with your advisor and talk to them and see how you can actually start to find these events to go to. Usually professors will even let you know when there's like a networking event popping up or you, if you're close to a professor you can definitely go and like talk to your professor and be like hey I'm trying to look for a job out here. This doesn't even go for just business. Anything you do is relationship based. Like if you're, in, if you're a science student, if you're an engineering student, to get that job, yeah resume and grades is definitely one stepping stone but an even bigger stepping stone is having the connections and the network and the ability to socialize and communicate with people to put your best foot forward which leads me to point number three at least I think we're on point number three now you're not gonna hear this too too much from anywhere else I hope you guys are hearing this piece of advice more and more but I'll just tell you right now y'all gotta be your authentic self like I I, I get it you want to put your best foot forward I was also a student ambassador for CRA so I was actually on the other side of things and I was able to help with 
with recruiting and I know exactly what they're looking for. They're basically looking for someone different. So imagine having like 40 people talk to you and they all are the same, asking you the same boring dull question. That's why I always tell people just try to be your most authentic self when it comes to networking. Try to start off like a conversation just by asking the recruiter how their day is. How's it been? Like I used to start off with like an, a little bit of an icebreaker slash joke. You just like laugh about it and they're just like, oh, I know, right? It's just been so exhausting. And then it's just kind of a nice, like a breath of fresh air if you just kind of come in with a little joke or an icebreaker as opposed to just going in and being like, hi, just being more formal. I'm not trying to say that you shouldn't introduce yourself like that. Don't get me wrong. You should always 100% put your best foot forward in the sense that you should introduce yourself. All I'm saying is that the approach, which is the first impression, is 90% of the impression that the recruiter is going to get. So if you can get the first two minutes of your conversation bang in and you can make it memorable, which is why I'm, I say you should have an icebreaker, it will be it just be so much more impactful because from my experience when I would be talking to students, A, they would be really shy and I would be the one who had to engage in conversation with them, which would mean that I'm exhausted. Like I'm talking to so many people throughout the day. Like I, I would love if someone else were to just initiate the process. I would love to see that initiative. I'm trying to bring to the table another perspective. That being said, this is number four. You do need good grades. I'm not gonna lie to you guys, but, 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 but. Grades isn't everything. You should definitely not be like hovering around like a 2.0 or a 2.5. Like you should 100% have higher than a 3.0. I'm not necessarily saying you should be, have like a 3.8 GPA. What really matters, especially when trying to get with the big four is your connections and your networking, which is why those were the in the top three categories that I had talked about. So you definitely need the grades, but you should definitely have more of the social aspect. This leads me into my number four, case competitions. Guys, if you're a business student and you are going to these events, you're doing the whole LinkedIn thing, you're doing follow-up emails, and it's been like a couple of months and it's fall recruiting season and you still haven't been able to land anything, don't worry, you can still do business competitions. Now, business competitions can also be found on your career link through professors. There'll be bulletin boards of along your classrooms or wherever you go there hundred percent there's ways for you to find these business competitions and I highly suggest sign up for them even if you don't have people to sign up with you can individually sign up and the company that are hosting it will put you in a team full of other people who have individually signed up for it what competitions and case comps do is not only is it a time for you to showcase the skills that you and knowledge that you have on a certain subject it's a good time to polish up your presentation skills which will roll into your social skills but it's also a great opportunity to network. Again, everything kind of zooms into networking. Now I'll quickly tell you guys how I got a job at one of the big four. I did a lot of networking, but actually I wasn't too successful. It was really rough for me to actually get into any of the big four. What I did is I actually participated in a case competition and I did exactly what I'm telling you guys to do. I was alone, but I actually gathered like other friends, not, not even friends, just people who I knew and other in my classes and my business classes and I never really talked to them but I kind of put myself out of my comfort zone I messaged them they said yes we put together a team and there you have it we had a case comp team went to the case comp presented our product and we won that was awesome that was a great experience even if we hadn't won I've seen so many people from that case comp working with me right now or have had the opportunity to network even more and meet more professionals and have landed jobs elsewhere because again it's a really good way to network basically trying to find a job in any field requires you to kind of be an extrovert to a certain extent I know all y'all introverts you know it kind of sucks to hear that you need to be able to communicate and talk to others if you want that job I think this is tip number five or is step number five <laughs> I haven't been keeping track of this obviously tip number five would actually be to talk to a lot of the student ambassadors I can actually validate this and verify this information is correct if you get to know a lot of the students that are already working Working there or that you see you're at the booth and you're networking with them get to know them be friends with them hang out with them chances are they're still in school you're probably gonna still have them in some of your classes be friends with them follow them on LinkedIn because a lot of the times there's a debrief session that happens after networking events and these kids that were basically student ambassadors that were there are asked who do you think was a good fit for the company which candidate or who did you talk to today that kind of stood out in your mind so if your name gets kind of thrown in there that's increasing the likelihood that you're gonna Gonna get an interview and then that's gonna increase the likelihood that you're gonna get that job so that would be another tip tip number six 
is consistency and don't lose faith. So this happened to me a lot. Um, as I already mentioned, I was like networking so much in my second year, but I was not successful at all. Sometimes it's just the circumstances and sometimes it depends on how competitive it is that year. And sometimes it also just depends on your current experience and luck. There's a component of luck that is in, involved in this process of landing your dream job. But the thing that will always beat luck is your hard work and, cons and consistency. So same thing goes for grades. You know, you got to keep studying. Even if you do bad on a quiz, you just got to keep studying. It doesn't mean you get disheartened and you just stop, right? You have to keep going. Same thing goes for networking. So if you get rejected and you work so hard and you got to like, I don't know, interview round two and you never got something, think of it as a positive outlook and just be like, hey, at least I got to even go to round two of interviews. I know people who didn't even get that chance, right? So you got to be able to hold yourself accountable and keep yourself in a positive mindset, which leads into my number seven. And this is kind of a tip again, as I already mentioned, this isn't going to be super formal and I'm going to let you guys know what you guys need to do to make this happen. Like get your dream job at one of the big four. You need to start actually having confidence and confidence is so, so, so important. It really shows that you believe that you're meant to be working at that firm. You're not going in kind of all like wimpy looking, all scared. We know you're scared. That's, that's okay. It's okay to be nervous and scared and stressed out. We should know that you have enough faith in your own skills and you're confident enough so that we're going to be like, damn, okay, well, if he's confident in his skills, that just shows leadership skills right there. You can't let someone else put a value on you yourself because if you do that, that means you're not confident enough. You gotta really push yourself and put your best foot forward and be like, no, I deserve to be here. If you have no experience, that's okay. You can just be like, no, I'm here to learn and work hard. I have the working ethic. I am at this business school for a reason and I'm here right now talking to you because I am so motivated to learn more. You really have to change your mindset when it comes to this as well because it really starts off with you being confident and that also ties into my, my tip number one which was to be your authentic self and to just be who you are because you want to be able to actually find a good fit in the company. You don't want to fake being someone just to get a job just to be like exhausted from faking it and then when you get to the job and you get your dream job you're gonna be disappointed or exhausted all the time you don't want to be doing that either so just just putting that out there all of the videos that i used to watch when i was in the process of trying to find a job and networking they stressed me the fuck out like they were so like this is what you have to do that's what you have to do i feel like a lot of the times you're kind of brainwashed to think a certain way and you start to lose your authentic self and there are gonna be there are 100 percent going to be firms out there and there's gonna be people out there that love you because of the way you are so i really just suggest you be yourself so i hope these tips kind of came in handy for y'all and good luck out there you guys are gonna kill it and just be confident get that resume in check get that linkedin ready have them follow up emails ready to go also have fun seriously have fun if you enjoyed this video uh please give it a thumbs up subscribe to my channel if you want to know anything more about the business world or like what i actually do at work and whatnot comment below and i'm more than happy to put that out there and once again i won't make it so formal it'll be like a good conversation like this have an amazing day and see you next video